Y'all ready to be history? It's started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, lady! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Tribooth. Don't forget the code if you want to get $200 off your purchase. Try PAP200. That's T R I P A P 200. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Also, don't forget, whatever platform you're listening to us on, can you just give us a like, a subscribe, or whatever else, ringing bells and thumbs up and. Give us a thumbs down. I don't care. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Give us anything. Just, just anything. <laughs> Let us know you're alive. Yeah, Throw us a bone. That's right. Yeah, chuck us a bone. Keep us going. Anyway, talk about keeping us going. Um, a few weeks ago, we tested the NT USB Plus from Rode, the new USB mic. And we just said we were going to do uh, a bit of a well, an experiment. Basically, could you use that microphone on a session, particularly one that uses a lot of EQ and compression, which is, of course commercial radio in particular. So the experiment was thrown over to, once again, Robbo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and much to Robert's amazement, the amount of stereo effects that are going on in the background as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get my other half back. But yeah. <laughs> was it the right or the left that fell off? Uh, or the, the centre, <laughs> one or the, the right. other. Yeah. Hopefully the right. <laughs> um, anyway, Robbo's put some stuff together. And uh, we can have a bit of a listen and see if you guys can work out. And I, I think I know which one's which. What's the other mic? And B, yep. which one's which? So yep. I thought that might and be And which one sounds the best to your ears. Yeah. Interesting. So where do we want to start? Do we want to go with just the clean? Well, let, let me set it up okay. first. So basically what I did was I just opened up a Pro Tools session of a top of hour that I'd made for a client of mine a couple of months ago uh, and uh, sent AP the script uh, which he voiced once on the mystery mic and once on the Rode USB. And then I basically took out the original voiceover, dropped in AP's file of the mystery mic and remixed the session as I normally would. Then I, all I did was I replaced the mystery mic file with the Rode USB file. Uh, I just adjusted some EQ, left everything else the same, compression and effects and all that sort of stuff, and mixed that out. So I guess maybe what we should do is play the mix the two mix files. So the first one is simply called file one. From Lilyvale to Jeroa. It makes me feel good, I love it. The music that makes you feel good. One, two, three. The Omni Guitar! This is the Illawarra's number one. And can I also just say I'm glad I didn't pay AP for the voiceover because in neither file did he voice the client's name. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. Yeah, well, they pay extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's that's one. Uh, and this one will be forever known as File 2. From Lilyvale to Jerome. It makes me feel good. I love it. The music that makes you feel good. One, two, three. The Omni Guitar! This is the Illawarra's number one. So one of them is obviously the Rode USB mic. Which one is it and what's the other mic? I'm not sure if I'd change my mind now. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Well, let's go around the table. Who's going to start? I can only tell when I heard the raw audio. Okay. I could tell right. which was I could tell the difference and I could tell what I thought was the raw audio in the two, but I but in the mix pretty hard to tell. They're really pretty close, hard. right? That would be that yeah. was my First impression. What about you, Robert? I think I still think that mic two is the better mic and mic one is the cheaper mic. And I just think that mic one, there's a little bit more of a sibilance thing to it in the final mix and it's thinner, maybe. So um, to you, that makes it automatically the less expensive mic. I think so. I'm not, this is really hard to tell in Some the mix. And I've not listened to any other file except for the two mix files. I'm thinking. Mixed mix two sounds really quite toppy in cuts. Um, and I kind of like mix one, but I'm 
sort of leaning towards mix two. I don't know why, but I'm, I I like mix two better. Yeah, it just cuts more. That's all. But they're really close, right? I, I think mix. Yeah, very close. Okay. Well, really mix close. two yeah. is the OC eighteen, and mix one is the road. Ding 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 ding. So so so, what do I win? So we win. Yeah. We won that one. Yep. That's one point to you, Robert. One 18, point to yeah. me. I I thought one had a more like sibilant and less pleasing top end. It wasn't that it had less of it. It was less organized. It was yeah. I found I had to f- fuck around with the top end more on the USB mic to get yeah. it close. But having said that, we're talking about a USB mic, and we're talking about an OC eighteen and a Grace M one hundred and one. There's a, like a four hundred dollar spread between the mics. At yeah, least, plus right? plus the preamp. Oh, the preamp. So you're talking about a, a mic. What's the what's the anti USB plus? What they sell for? Like one hundred and sixty bucks or something. Right. So you talk one hundred and sixty bucks, and then you're talking about an OC eighteen and a Grace M one hundred and one. Now Grace goes for what a thousand bucks US? I, I don't know about hey, hold on. yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and then then the eighteen would be eight hundred eight hundred, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, it would be eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. So basically, eighteen hundred dollars versus one hundred and sixty dollars. Yep. This is the nature of math and. Exponential stuff, though it is, and this is where you know. where people talk about you know buying a Neumann or a cheap yeah, MXL or something. It's the diminishing returns. It is of incre- mm-hmm. increased cost, and the fact that at the low end of the price range, the ability to reproduce sound, you know, accurately has dramatically increased over the last twenty yeah. years. Yeah. So the differences are just shrinking. It's probably worth just listening to the next two files is just the isolated voiceover. With the processing? With the processing. So this is the the, the processed, like mic EQ'd one and mic two processed? everything in. But without the beds and everything, yeah. From Lilyvale to Jaroa, the music that makes you feel good. This is the Illawarra's number one. And here's mic two. From Lilyvale to Jaroa. The music that makes you feel good. This is the Illawarra's number one. Mm, interesting. Now, I didn't really mention my preference, but when I heard the mic one and mic two raws, to my ears and my headphones, mm-hmm. I preferred mic one. I found mic two was too forward in the upper mids. There was something what I considered sounding that, that sounded a little peaky. Um and that was just, it was just a frequency I didn't like. It's just, it's subjective. That might be the audio engineer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. There's just, a, no, the, even in the raw file, even in the raw audio, which we haven't even played yet, there was something I preferred about one versus two. And, and it wasn't because two was bad, but there was one frequency I didn't like. Now that could be my hearing, that could be my headphones, but that's the same reason why I don't like some headphones because some headphones and sort of boost that frequency, right? I, I am really sensitive from like 2 to 4K. I hate that frequency range. I hate it. So it just really stands out to me. That's what it well, is. Well, interestingly, that's the frequencies that you play around in with, yeah. Sure. And Because inter- that's the cut frequency. That's the cut frequency. Yeah. And also probably, I'm just trying to think, interestingly in there, uh, there's a, in behind there, there's a, a parallel bus that takes the voice as well. And on that bus mm-hmm. is some heavy compression and um, little radiator from Sound Toys is stropped, st- uh, not little radiator, um, decapitator is strapped across that as well with some distortion, which is, thinking about it is, was probably up around there a bit too to give it some extra crunch up there as well. So that's kind of interesting that you're hearing that. Sure, so, yeah. yeah. But that, that's kind of what it takes to mix something for radio when you need it to cut and you need it to be audible in a car or something. That makes sense. You've also got to remember that um, you're sort of compensating for on-air processing as well, which is sort of out of your hands, but most in, most yep. station engineers set it up the same with a heap of bottom end and you know, all, and heavy compression and limiting and yep. all that sort of stuff as well. So you're, you're just trying to send them like a pre-packed like lump here. <laughs> try, to, try to change this diamond. Well, this, like, this is way <laughs> off topic, but there's a product made by Angry Audio called Chameleon. And what it's designed to do mm-hmm. is let you monitor through what his, he designed his own basically black box version of uh, Orbin multiband processor, right? And it's just for monitoring. 
So you could monitor through something that emulates an FM processor. What would be interesting would be how that would change how you mix because you're hearing it the way it goes out on the air. Or how you perform. It's more or like how you, how perform. you perform. Yeah, because he has one that's just for headphones too, you know? It's just an interesting concept. One of the major radio um, networks in the UK has actually stopped mastering all their imaging. So they're basically mixing it and putting it out with enough compression just to hold it together like some glue, I suppose, in inverted commas, and then they're letting the on-air processing doing the rest because they were just finding it was just being slammed so much that they've actually just decided to pretty much leave it alone. I bet it sounds a lot better. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, probably sounds good. It's funny because, like, I haven't had to deal with that for so many years because now everything is just controlled by the Calm Act. So... Like you're just given a certain amount of headroom and it, and and you're like hit this average volume. That's for television, so you, right? Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Minus twenty three yeah. lux, uh, right? Twenty four LKFS. Yeah, it's oh, the same. Plus minus two, so you just deliver it probably minus twenty two. Yeah, All right. But they don't care about radio. So radio, we just take that mix and we just like decapitate it. Yeah, exactly. but radio will also broadcast one twenty eight MP threes and all sorts of shit. So really, let's be honest. Yeah, they don't care. As long as you can hear it. Oh, they don't care. It's sad. No one really cares anymore. On the other end of the spectrum, guess what YouTube wants you to send it at? It's minus 15 or something, isn't it? Yeah. 96K, 24-bit. No, 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 Luffs. Uh, Luffs? Minus 14. Yeah, well, minus 14 is what we do the radio at because basically minus 14 is kind of like a slammed. It's the beginning of slamming, but not getting too bad. It's not like a CD, but it is definitely like you're going to hit the limiter a few times at minus 14 if you're giving it a... Minus 24 max. Because this stuff was going out on the podcast, I haven't put that through the limiter yet. So that's that's everything up to the limiter. Then that would be like at minus one and, and just not slammed again, but it would be working. Right. It'd be working reasonably. Yeah, the mix, yeah. Shows, the, the mix shows distinct peaks that you could easily limit. Do. Yeah, yeah. And, and it would just flatten them right. out. Should we play the raw audio now? Or? Yeah, so this was this was kind of interesting too. This is the raw audio. So these are, these are basically the files that AP sent me, but I've just chopped all the gaps out just for so everyone could hear what we started with. I've just got a question though before you do play it. You're using like Mix 1, Pro, uh, Processed 1 and Raw 1 at the same mic? They're all the same mic. So that's, yeah, all, okay. that's all the USB mic. That's interesting. Mic. Okay, because so far I've ticked Processed 2 as well. It's my favourite. From Lilyvale to Jeroa. The music that makes you feel good. This is the Illawarra's number one. And here's Mike too. And these are matched to the same luffs, I think, minus 20. From Lilyvale to Jaroa, the music that makes you feel good. This is the Illawarra's number one. So if I could take those two mics and make a baby and get the perfect <laughs> EQ combination of them, mm-hmm. which would be no problem, it'd be very easy to do. Um, you know, it could get something... To my ears, it sounds great, but neither of them are bad. They're just different. <laughs> I, I think that the first mic, which is the USB mic, has more bottom end on it. does. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Um, and I think that it still has like the less organized thing where when you listen to the more expensive mic, it also has the same bottom end, but not all the time. It's tighter. It punches it? a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. It's like a reverse curve. One's curved one way, one's curved the other way. Kind of. It's almost it's almost like the USB mic sounds maybe compressed or something. I don't know. It sounded well. That's that's what I've been saying. I, I was talking to, to Robbo about this I, when I when I recorded both and listened to the raw files here. I it came to the conclusion with the Rode mic. What they they I have a signature. There is something about Rode mics. They love that sort of low mid thing. That low. Yeah, yeah, they love it, and it seems to be right across the board. I I, I think maybe. Even even the NTG five, it's, on, has it's it. definitely on the NTG five, yeah, and the three has it in spadefuls. I think this mic is obviously marketed for podcasters, and I and I and most podcasters are not production guys; they don't understand processing. Yeah. So, I think they just put it into the mic, so you don't have to even think about it. You just plug it in and go. I for it. think something else too, like radio, kind of likes that big it sound, does. and they yeah. it, they they almost get that out of the SM sevens and the PL twenties and the like those dynamic mics. And I think it's almost like mm. they're trying to maybe give it like... The Optimod. <laughs> warmth or something. I don't know. And I don't think any of those plugins sound bad on any of the pl- processing preset buttons, which are just literally on-off switches, sound bad. Um, 
if you were to punch them all on, it doesn't sound offensive, but it's maybe too much big bottom, you know, <laughs> or too much oral yeah. cider, but not too, too much. Like they, they, they were constrained. It's they didn't not too bad. go over the top, which says a lot about how much they are really, really listening. You know, I think in the, uh, maybe four years ago or six years ago, those would have been exaggerated just way too much. But I think everybody's more discerning now. They're listening closer. They're more, you know, people are just listening better, listening more and caring more and not, it's not, it's not like they need it to be exaggerated to sell the mic. I guess that's the point. You know, like yeah. something has a demo mode, you know, and it, everything does everything over the top. So look at all the things it does, right? But Rode didn't do that. They were like, no, we'll, we'll just make sure they are all usable functions without being overcooked or in any, in any way. Yeah, I, I think I think Rode is very much looking at the user and who who it is that they're trying to sell to. And they're putting it at a very spe- specific price point that is very obtainable. Sure, I mean, yeah. And and what it is um, from a value perspective, it's definitely up there, um, like way up there. And they've just sort of hit every mark. It's not for it's not flexible. It's just does its thing, and they've shot it right down the middle. Good enough for podcasters. Pretty much good enough for voiceover. A little bit colored, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit. Um, but man, if if you jumped on a session with someone with that mic. You would not go like, "What mic are you on?" No, no, no. <laughs> you would just get on with your yeah. session, and and I, I think they've read yeah. the market really well because the, the podcast market has changed. It's gone from the you know kid in the bedroom to now there's people who actually have some idea of what they're doing. Oh yeah. So you yeah. know, so they they've actually moved the mic to fit the the new audience, well, the new client base. I think that's what they've done. they've really read it well because there's a lot of people doing podcasts that are not. Audio engineers, they're 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 more on the journalism side of right. things. And so yeah. their need to do audio is seen more as utilitarian than sort of Well, a, there's a whole other market segment we really <laughs> never talk about, and that's live streamers, which really refers to gamers. And mm-hmm. they used to be completely acceptable to have a headset mic, you know, just a boom mic on your headphones, and that's good enough. But the live streamers that are on YouTube and Twitch and stuff, they're using large diaphragm condensers now. You know, I see a lot of NT. Oh ones. yeah, they want high quality audio. They're using Stellar's and all this stuff. So you know, the fact that this can be used in that context and give you that pre-processed sound is a. Exactly. And they are competing against some some mics in that price point now. There's like more and more coming out. Um, Do you know, you know it's really funny in a way what they're competing against. When you go to even C- CES and stuff, there's this booth. After booth, after booth, after booth, after booth of Chinese mic makers. And they've all decided that the next thing is to put LEDs in their microphones and speakers. Yes. (laughs) And it's like the cheesiest stuff. But a lot of it is like, you know, voice processor and da 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 da. And it's like, it's that, but refined with some taste instead of like, yeah. <laughs> this is like, it's too much of. I don't know. My you know. road mic with the blue LED, it's subtle. I know it's on, but it's not like blowing me away, like annoyingly. At least for me, it doesn't bother me. In a totally yeah. dark room, it's going to really call attention to itself. It's subtle. Like, I, I think it's tasteful. <laughs> it's It's got a lot more taste yeah. than the ones I'm yes. talking about. Oh, some of them will... are full blown RGB. <laughs> You know, oh they're like God. lighting up like it's a, hilarious. you know, it looks like a freaking yeah. Hawaiian yeah. ice, you yeah. know, in so many freaking yeah, it's colors. it's definitely like, let's party. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it's it's a sweet spot, you know. Um, yeah, so kudos. It's a, I, I have the cheap, the little cheap uh, Rode Video Mic Go 2 now because I couldn't resist. It was selling for $80 US. And even that microphone is amazing as a USB microphone. Yep. It has input level gain. It has a headphone monitor level output uh, control. It has a high pass filter with two positions, just like this. And it sounds clean. It's not noisy. It's not hissy. It's it's remarkable. It's just, it's remarkable, really. I mean, I've recommended for it to a bunch of people. For less than 100 bucks. Yeah. I mean, for travel, throw it in your bag, take it with you. Um, it's just like a decent USB powered small diaphragm mic. Yeah. Is it, is it hyper cardioid? You know, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a shotgun cardio-esque mic. It's designed to be a shotgun mic, but it's a very short barrel. So 
it's going to yeah, be so it's more hyper, hyper than super. But hyper's good. Like, yeah. Most people are yeah. using super when they really should be on hyper. They shouldn't be on a shotgun. They should be on a hyper mic. Um, you know, I, I would choose a hypercardioid over a shotgun mic in many, many cases. It's just a better choice. But the 416 is pervasively... I like figure eight. I like figure eight too. I've been telling people all the time, if you can try a figure eight, try it. You know, many people have U eighty sevens and never even try it. And they don't even know why they would try it. But I'm just like, well, freaking try it. <laughs> you might be shocked how much better it sounds in your just warm your it booth. up. Yeah, it yeah, warms it up. It gets rid of the high, the high, the ceiling reflections, and it does all kinds of interesting stuff. It rejects the crap out of the sides. Oh, yeah. Like, like depending on how you use it, you can actually use it sure. successfully as a. Almost like in the same way you try to use a shotgun. Yep. It's bad if there's a window to, directly behind it. That would be bad. Yeah. But <laughs> most people don't have a mic, a window directly behind their mic. Usually they have a a panel or a bass trap or something. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that was a really interesting, a really interesting shootout. Yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah. Thanks for producing but, that. But at the at the end of the day, though, I mean, the question is, you know, I mean, I, I actually went on and jumped onto B and H, who don't sell bacon, but they sell lots of audio gear and camera gear. Um, if you, I got the prices. So it was twelve hundred for the Gray Seven One Hundred One and eight fifty for the uh, OC eighteen. So a bit over two thousand bucks. Australian or US? Uh, US. So two thousand US. Okay. <laughs> Grace went way up. <laughs> yeah. A mono preamp for twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Solid Gray Seven One Hundred One. Twelve hundred. God, yeah. God damn. They're very good though. Give me a John Hurry. Very good. Um. So I mean, look, you, you, you. It's a compromise to go with a USB mic for sure. Yeah, uh, I I don't think necessarily because we've done this and had this conversation that everybody should be racing out and buying a Rode USB, USB mic mics. for their voiceovers. Oh, I would sell your U87. I mean, the market's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> Tulips. I would suggest this. I would suggest if you want some sort of a backup in case, you know, one day you turn on your pre and it's not working so you can't use your, your you know, your shotgun or whatever else, as a backup, having one in the cupboard for that holy fuck, what am I going to do moment for the price, surely is worth a oh, yeah, piece of Oh, well, like the other day I went to use the Club Deck app to do Clubhouse and I could not get my unit, I couldn't get my Apollo twin Universal Audio Thunderbolt driver to show up as a mic input yeah. in the damn app. And I, yeah. It's totally inexplicable. I had no idea what to do. There's nothing I could do about it. And I was going live on a clubhouse in seconds. Yeah. I swung my road into USB around, changed the mic input, and I was back in business. That's it was it. just like, okay, that was I, nice. I was really yeah. glad I had that. <laughs> I've just got it sit next to me on the stand for that very reason, just in case. I'm yeah, it was 30 happens. seconds to air. I had to just be there. Yeah. And there yeah, there yeah. it was. Got to do I've, it. I've used mine for just meetings and just to sound better. And mm -hmm. it's like sitting there and it's so easy on the yeah. desk. Do you, do you hold you it know, and talk to, to, to the really end of it, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> I talked to the wrong end of it, like someone I know, yes. <laughs> do, do you know what's a shame? I, I'm, I'm going to yeah. invest in a, a, a Big Knob Studio Pro, whatever, Pro Studio 1 or whatever, 2, the new one, whatever it is anyway, the USB one, to go with my new Mac. And you can actually have an external talkback mic because I use I use the talkback on the big knob when I'm in sessions and stuff, uh, online sessions. Um, so you talk to your clients? Yeah, and it's just a shame that you can't. I, I was thinking the other day, it's a shame that I, that would be the perfect use for the, the USB mic that Rode sent me would be to use that as my talkback, but it only takes analog, unfortunately, not USB. Yeah, so I'm kind of stuck. you wouldn't have a... Well, and you want your talkback triggered by a button. Too, yeah, a physical so. button. So is it, you're getting the, the Mackie Big Knob 3x2? Three by two, three the, yeah, two? The, the biggest one. that has got two mic pre's in it. I guess that's the one, that, yeah. That one, yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, you only do stereo, right? Yeah, I don't. Do yeah, you surround. don't do surround. No, I don't do surround. And either. and and how many speakers do you have? I've got four. Yeah, how many sets? I got I got the two atoms, and then I've just got some little cheapy, okay. shitty things that I found just as a reference. Can can the big knob switch between four no, sets? Two sets. He's got two sets. I've only got two. I think it's three. I think it can. I think you oh. can have three monitors. Yeah, you can do three. You can switch three. three. Sets of monitors. Yeah, yeah. You can do yeah. three. Um, and three. So the reason why I don't like the big knob is because it does not have a slate output for its microphone. Yeah, I know. And that, that drives me crazy. It's, it's, oh, I know what you mean. And it yeah. doesn't it's got dim. a 2-2 two, two track. Is that what you mean? You could, there's a 2-2 two, two track button, talk back. Yeah, but it's got your mix on it. 
It's got your mix on it, and it uh, fucks okay. up the mix yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gotcha. It's so funny. Oh, you, oh, then you're getting the you're getting the Mackie annoying. four by three, not the two by three by two. The I'm four so by not three is it. even. I just I can see. Well, it in I'm my looking head. at him right now. I don't. The four by three has three sets of monitors A, B, C. That's the one. Yep, and, and two got two mic pre's back, right, and connects by USB to the a dedicated talkback mic input. Yeah, that's what I with a foot switch. And but not but not a slate output. Well, yeah, it, you know what the other company does? It's called Personas. They make the monitor station. Oh uh, yeah. They don't have a dedicated mm -hmm. output, a but output. what they do is they have a Q bus. So you just assign only yes. the talk back to, to the, the Q, Q and that yeah, yeah, to the yeah. Q yeah, and that fixes yeah, it. Right. Yeah, it yeah, it's it's another option. You can do yeah. it that way, yeah. Well, we've really a day. We've really a day. We've dug in. We've gone deep, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Robo, do you use the local Q? Or do you just um, do you just kind of go into a, like no no local talent? I mean, don't don't you have? Like oh no, I don't use it locally. Like, like no, no, no. Place? I just use the 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 two. There's a on the talkback. There's a two phones, or studio, and so I just use that. I've got that coming yeah. back into the double O two. That is your slate output. Yeah, that's my slate, yeah. and that just goes back into the Mac and mm -hmm. and out. Thank you to Source Nexus. Yeah. Which some slack ass company yeah. may I don't know who they are. The fucking <laughs> amateurs. Yeah, exactly. Really. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if anybody's listening wants to uh give us their thoughts on what they've heard today, apart from critiquing us, because uh we don't know that kind of caper. <laughs> they might take back hey, their well. like they gave us at the beginning <laughs> of the episode as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but leave us a thing in the comments and stuff. Engage with us, please. No, so I'm getting all online now. I'm yeah. getting online now. AP's yeah. getting all yeah. content producer on us, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, everyone does it. I watch these things. Speaking of microphones, before we disappear, we no, should remind everyone about... Uh, <laughs> what was that? Speaking... Speaking of herpes and 80s discos, <laughs> don't forget to fill up the survey. Speaking of sexually transmitted diseases, don't forget our survey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, Just like when you used to go to the doctors and they said you had to fill up the thing about... And you know, be sure to the pass the survey to somebody else so that they can also fill it. <laughs> right. And, 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 and always wear a condom while filling out the survey. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. It's on your finger, because they work really well on the laptop. Yeah, on the yeah. iPad. But don't send us the condom. Remember, it's at, it's at theproaudiosuite.com. Theproaudiosuite.com. So what are we looking for their feedback on? Remind everybody. Oh, we want to know what you want in the ultimate audio interface for voiceover. Yeah. Yeah. For Specifically for voiceover. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? That's the Absolutely. idea. Let us know what you'd like to see. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribo. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.